can a horror prequel about two people going for pizza during the apocalypse break the spell of mediocrity of horror in 2024? Let's talk about it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are back. The Eye of the Storm podcast. Today, we'll be reacting to A Quiet Place Day 1. If you want to get straight into the main discussion, we have timestamps below. But before we even get into the main discussions, guys, we need movie recommendations for our peoples, our peeps. What's the best recent thing that you guys saw last week? So the best thing I saw last week was a small Hulu sitcom that I had never heard of before called Reboot, which is a 2022, I think, sitcom about a an old 2000 sitcom that is being rebooted 20 years later for streaming. And it's basically... It's not the smartest comedy ever, it's not the funniest comedy ever, but it's solid and it's a, it's one season of these writers and actors trying to revive the show that essentially made their careers or started their careers 20 years ago and they've gone on to do different things over time, most of them not terribly successful and a lot of them basically need this to work and so they have to figure out how to make a sitcom in 2022, how to do a reboot of a show in a, in a completely different TV environment and there's this generational clash between newer writers and the older writers with very different senses of humor and ideas of what the show should be. I had never heard of it before. It, it just it was one of those straight to Hulu shows that here in the UK showed up on Disney Plus. It seems to have generally positive reactions, but it's just enjoy an enjoyable watch. It's pretty short. It, it's eight 20 minutes episodes, and I basically watched it in an evening, and I had a good time. It actually sounds quite interesting. It sounds it sounds fun. It sounds like one of those kind of like just like feel good shows that you can just like watch and sort of you know, pass time with, to be honest. Yeah. It does kind of does some drive by commentary about like how humor has changed and that sort of thing. And like there's this one actor who's always one inch away from being cancelled and stuff like that. So it, there's a little bit of that. And yeah, but it's it's just a solid comedy and there's actually a sh they're in short supply. Like it's really hard to find just a comedy that's not too heavy and that isn't like a big production, and that just wants to tell a funny story for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just kind of want that. I, I, I don't know some of the type of humour that's in there, but sometimes in these sort of TV shows, you just kind of want just like a bit of like goofy humour, just kind of yeah. something like to watch, something that's like not too heavy. Kind of, well, not reminds me of, but like sounds along the lines of, uh, what's the what's the TV series I watch? It's called something like about Once, Once Upon a Time or something like that. It's a, it's basically about like this couple that sort of you know, uh, make a true crime podcast based on a real killer and they're making the podcast with that particular killer. And again, mm -hmm. it's one season of it and it's just like, like fun, like feel good fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, this this is very much that kind, of, that kind of show. And like 20 years ago, I probably would have gotten five seasons on some TV network. But now it's kind of dumped somewhere in the depths of streaming services. So that's kind of why I picked it this week, because this is a perfectly fine show. It's not the best show ever. It's not it's not my favorite comedy, but it's just a good watch. And it doesn't deserve to be quite as obscure as it is. And again, with, I mean, with this stuff, not everything needs to be 10 out of 10 every single time. Like sometimes like the 7 out of 10s and the 8 out of 10s are just good enough to yeah. But yeah, my best recent thing watched. Uh, so I'm two episodes into Dark Matter. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about it. I talked to my chat about it uh, online. Yeah, I need to finish that. I've, I've heard of it. I've not seen anything about it yet. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's from Apple TV. And Apple TV seems to have sort of, uh, a lot of these sort of hidden gems uh, on their platform. And they sort of tend to produce, you know, good quality stuff uh, consistently. But essentially, it's based on a guy that is abducted by himself, but from a real, uh, an alternate reality. Uh, and essentially, they switch places in this sort of alternate reality. It's all based on sort of this one choice that that they made where, you know, they got this girl pregnant and one decided to have uh, the normal kind of like happy family life and go down to the, the typical kind of like boring married, uh, married life with kids. Uh, and then the other one chose to be selfish, chose, um, asked for a time of abortion and pursued his, sort of, his work and his goals essentially. And the gist that I'm getting from it is that the person that sort of pursued that life, pursued sort of, his selfish sort of goals, is sort of got to a point in his life where he's having that regret, worked on this machine, and he succeeded in sort of building this machine, which has allowed him to travel to an alternate reality. And in that alternate reality, he's then living the life that maybe he actually wanted to live or felt like he missed out on by sort of having pursuing that selfish goal, essentially. So I'm two, two episodes in. 
they're currently trying to sort of know, solve the mystery or sort of know, or they kind of have a gist as to what's happened and they're trying to sort of know, fix it or the, the person, the, the guy that's been displaced is trying to fix what the ultimate <laughs> the ultimate self of him has done basically. But again, it's not it's not anything that's a 10 out of 10, super amazing, but it's good past life. Just one of those like feel good things that you can watch uh, and actors in it are pretty solid as well. Characters are sort of, you know, warming as well, which is always good. So it's good. And it, it does interesting things with the parallel like the like the multiverse has been really overexposed in recent years, right? Does it does it do that well? Again, I'm only two episodes in. Mm-hmm. Uh Jonathan's a little bit further in. Don't spoil it for me, Jonathan. So I'm, you know we won't get you get you to uh, answer that answer that question. But yeah, I don't I don't think they've like fully explored that yeah. It's at the moment it's just a guy that's been displaced in there sort of a different world. And obviously you kind of go through the process of him going to the familiar places, going to the familiar people that he's familiar with, and him looking crazy because he's sort of you know, trying to say that, you know, they have this sort of you know, this rapport, this sort of you know, connection, and they're just looking at him like he's absolutely crazy. So it's a word in which it's not commonly known that there are alternate dimensions. He kind of has to hide it. Oh yeah. So it's it's not it's not a common thing. Like no one no one knows about that they've been switched. So everyone is pretty much shocked or well I don't think many people have even, like even though apart from uh, his wife in the alternate alternate dimension, but it's it's very much a case of it's not a normal thing in, in this particular world. Actually, sorry, there, there is a tease of this like organization that may be aware of it, but we haven't gone too much into into them just yet. Again, two episodes in, but there is this organization that were questioning him, and then he escaped from the escape was a bit BS if if you ask me to be honest. But we're not critiquing it too much. But yeah, there there is a tease of. A wider sort of no, kind of world with the with the multiverse, um, where people are potentially traveling between universes that they haven't revealed just yet. But in terms of what I watched, I watched um, a series which was executively produced by Ratman. It's called Supercell. It, it's a fun series. Um, it's a fun series. For people who don't know, it's about pretty much a group of black people, random South London. Um, they're all randoms, by the way. They all have superpowers and. One of them who has superpowers tries to like bring them together to pretty much save his girlfriend because one of his powers is he can teleport as well as go into the future and go back in past and rewind and yeah go back to the past and rewind time. So yeah, so he tries to save his girlfriend and yeah, in terms of in terms of all of them having superpowers in like pretty much the hood and just like different type of environment in like in you know just a normal environment is it's pretty fun it's similar to it, it has misfits similarities ish and the boys similarity ish a bit not too heavy but you can see some inspirations but yeah i do think it's 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 a, it's a fun watch um because i think with rat man's like obviously for people who are not familiar with him he got famous for a lot of his um short films where he incorporates his rap in were, were rap and actually store storytelling into one so i think but well, one thing that people are always looking forward to or one thing that's like a highlight moment when it comes to rap man stories is you know that there's an iconic death which is coming and there was definitely that in this series as well like it always build up to something it's always building up to a death that you don't want to happen so with this one you, you felt it you felt that was coming even though what was different is that we knew he was going to die, by the way, because they'll see. We knew that the guy was trying to save his wife. In this one, we were just waiting to see if it was actually going to happen. But it was a rap man, so I was like, okay, it's bound to happen. I think it is. It's definitely a fun watch. I do think at times um, there was, I was scared because, especially in the first episode, you could tell that there wasn't really a big, I don't know what the budget was like, but it wasn't really big enough for a superhero series because i think like in, there was in the scene where they were in oxford circus and oxford circus felt so big but there was only five against five and like you could it just didn't really look i think they should have done the minim, a minimalistic approach which they ended up doing in the last episode which i liked when there was a show that was actual um villains which i really liked they just had it like they literally were just fighting in some sort of park overall it was, it was fun it was a fun watch uh that is on my list uh of things to watch i think it's been talked about a lot uh i'm actually glad it's got sort of positive reviews and i'm actually glad that he's been given a chance but it's, it's on netflix isn't it yeah yeah 
I mean, just to see sort of you know, that man's growth from sort of you know, doing YouTube sort of you know, short stories like Shiro story and stuff like that to then sort of you know, building his way up to having sort of you know, uh, a Netflix TV show, uh, really good to see for sort of you know, the community. Man. So definitely, definitely on my list of things to check out. Now, main event time, a quiet place, day one. For people who haven't, oh Daniel, Daniel, you're 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 good at this. Please let the people know what day one part, what quiet place day one is about. So this is a prequel to, I think, 2018's A Quiet Place about this woman, Samira, who is dying from cancer and is living in a hospice. And she is essentially given up on life, right? She's essentially waiting to die. And then aliens invade. And rather than try to get to safety or try to fight back, she decides if she's going to go out, she wants to go back into her neighborhood, which she had has had to leave due to her treatment. And she just wants to have a slice of her favorite pizza. And that, that's how she wants her life to end. And so in this chaotic apocalypse in which there are these alien creatures that hunt by sound, and so nobody can make any sound, which is the whole premise of A Quiet Place. Um, she's basically just trying to get to her old neighborhood. And she encounters this British guy who is stranded in New York during the invasion and who decides to take her along and help her realize her goal. And that is essentially the movie. A dying woman's last wish, pizza, which I found hilarious. But if it, 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 it you know, I, I like this film. I, I liked it. There were times which I found a bit slow, which was um, in terms of obviously the, um, re- the relationship dynamic between um, the two main characters. But besides that, I think overall, this was a great addition to the franchise. Um, it, you know, it was definitely ripping. I felt like it was an anxiety, it was like an anxiety thrill type of film because you never knew which sound was going to get them. And I think they really, like, even though that's something that was executed in the first two films, this one, I think it was probably, for me, I think this was the film which was the best when it comes to that in terms of you never know which sound is actually going to get someone because it was such an, like, it was such an infested city because obviously the first two, it was very isolated in terms of, like, the people. It wasn't really that much people. Um, so the environment was very slim to none when it comes to the survivors. But this one, obviously, you know, it's a whole city. Obviously, we're seeing, um, we're seeing people get picked off one by one and we see people, you know, as a collective staying silent, which obviously provides the anxiety and the thrill when someone actually does make a sound. You're Like, everyone's looking around and it's like everyone's waiting, including the audience, we're like, okay, we know that they're coming, but who the hell did I die? Oh, oh, and there'll be times where you don't know when they're even coming, like which sound exactly is the sound that's actually going to get you killed, which I really enjoyed in this film. Like they executed that so well with this film. So I, I like the film, but like I said, there were times which was a bit slow for me. Um, I kind of did zone out a bit when it comes to like the scenes between the two characters where they're connecting. Um, I liked when they were going back and forth. Overall, I really liked the film. And I think this was the best film out of the three when it comes to just giving you that anxiety thrill. I think this is the second movie in a, in a row where I don't know how I feel about it. If this wasn't a quiet place day one, I wouldn't have had some of the expectations I had going into the movie, which weren't answered, uh, which was really frustrating for me. I mean, the, mov- the movie that we were presented with, again, sort of as Daniel described, was a good movie. And I felt like it was like really sort of strong, well acted from sort of um, both actors. Uh, I felt like it was like, you know, really emotional. Again, like you mentioned about something like the whole like pizza thing. It starts off as, you know, this one, we just wanted to get pizza, but then there's sort of the emotional payoff at the end. When I think about like it being day one and, you know, this being the third movie in the franchise and you know, there still being question questions that aren't really answered uh, in the movie. Again, we're sort of kind of like touching it in the spoiler section. It It just kind of drags it down for me. I felt like there was a lot of things that, didn't make sense as well. Things that I know some people can look past, like the cat, for example. I know some people can look past the cat. The cat was the most, one of the most ridiculous things in the movie for me. Just some of the rules that they set with the sound and stuff like that. Like, I, I again, I had question marks over, which, again, will probably delve a little bit more into, some, you know, uh, into the spoiler section. So I guess overall, as just like an initial sort of review, the movie that they chose to make 
granted if it was like you know uh, a little bit further further along sort of you know, and not it not being day one would have been uh, a great story would have well is a great story it's emotionally gripping it's sort of you know, very warming there's like really great character moments uh, in this movie but there's just there's just too many things that bugged me i'm on the fence with it you say it shouldn't have been a prequel. You say you would be happy if it was more of a continuation. I mean, for again, it's, it's difficult because for her story and sort of where she's kind of starting off and where sort of it, it takes her, sort of the journey of sort of her just wanting to get pizza and sort of where she begins in the movie, it makes sense. Obviously, it being sort of like day one and like the alien invasion happening and sort of her kind of having no hope in life, and not sort of really caring about surviving and just have that last slice of pizza before sort of she she dies. For that for that purpose, it makes sense for it to be in day one. But for it being day one, there's a lot of questions about sort of you know, how the world dealt with the invasion that just is kind of glossed over and isn't really answered in in this movie. Yeah, I think yeah. I think the big one is that you have to be on board with this being a character focused story, right? Yeah. That it's just about about her frame of mind and why she does what she does and the psychology of essentially it's essentially a story about letting go and about closure right because this is somebody who or has already gone through that once Mm -hmm. and then is caught up in this disaster right and where everybody else is concerned with surviving she's she's like survival is the last thing on her mind right and then the question is what does somebody in that situation do i think that's really the core of the movie and i think that it does exceptionally well like the the acting uh, of Samira is 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 incredible, and the um, the other main character character Eric is also good. But I think uh, Lupita Nyong'o really carries the movie here, like by a mile. I'm really surprised, or actually, that somebody made this movie because this I think this is a really unusual take for uh, for an alien invasion movie, for a post-apocalyptic movie, and for somebody to lean that hard into just a character study. I think is really bold and it could have really backfired and just not worked but i think it does i think it really like you really feel with her as she goes through this grieving process right and this is the first time the entire year where after the movie ended people stayed in their seats in my theater and talked about the movie it did not happen with dune it didn't happen with planet of the apes but this is the one time where people were touched by the movie and i think that speaks to its quality also, I was going to say, that's why it makes her, like, her motivation so much more, like, understanding and meaningful as well as iconic. Because it's like, even though, like, I remember when she told the guy, um, Eric, I remember when she told Eric, ah, oh, where she was going. She was going to go and look for a pizza. And obviously, he was just looking at her like she was crazy. And he didn't even know that, you know, spoiler section, he didn't even know that she had, um, was it cancer? Yeah. Yeah, she didn't even know that she had cancer. So... When she revealed that, like, obviously, we understand because it's like, okay, you're dying. And even though what you're doing is ridiculous and it's crazy and you're not, you're obviously, the environment that you're in and the settings that you're in, there's a whole alien invasion. Like, I understand, like, you know, it's your last dying wish. So that's what even made it more funny. I was like, she's actually, she's actually doing it. It's, it, was, it was crazy. It's ridiculous, but she's but actually like, doing what, it. But, like, what, what worked really well as well is that, like, even before the alien invasion is her wanting to connect with you know, the place where she goes to get the pizza. It's like, oh, mm. she doesn't really want to go into the city to watch this uh, puppet play, puppet show or anything like that. But the thought of being able to go back to the pizza spot and have you know, that moment, that connection again to that to that place, and then for that to then sort of kind of like carry through to the rest of the movie was like really well done, essentially. Mm. But going back to, because um, I have a question, going back to um, a point that you made, Herbie, about there wasn't like an explanation, which kind of leads into my question. Does an alien invasion need an exp- um, explanation, though? It's not more so the alien invasion, because they could have come from something absolutely anywhere. It's, I guess they kind of half did it, but one, you know, this, this it's quite unique in, in the sense that if you make noise, you're going to die in this universe. So it's how they explained how everyone was able to sort of know, kind of understand that that was the case, uh, essentially, which I don't think was sort of really well done. It, essentially, like that 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 side of things, I had like a lot of problems with in terms of just like she was knocked out in the movie. Basically, like the alien invasion happens, she's on the bus, it crashes, and then when she wakes up, she sees a few people like scream or make some noise, and then the aliens take them, and then you have the guy that like puts his puts his hand over her mouth. And basically like get her to sort of be quiet so it's like 
from her perspective, okay, yes, she was knocked out, but then for everyone else, it's how do you understand? Like, how do you correlate the two that, that you know, the, making a sound is going to get you killed by these aliens? Because if I see an alien, I feel like I'm going to die, whether I make a sound or not, basically. Yeah, and it's really, it's really counterintuitive, and it's a bit strange that that many people figure it out, right? Yeah. Like, when there's this evacuation scene, at the end, like, there's thousands and thousands of people, and they all figured this out. Mm-hmm. Like we know what's happening, right? We've if we've seen the previous movies, but like that that is probably one of the weaker points. Yeah. And I think that is just I think much like the first Quiet Place, you kind of have to accept that it's that it's happening, mm-hmm. right? In order to make the story happen, which I'm normally not a big fan of, but this is like the one gimme that the movie gets, right? Like this, like the aliens operate by sound and they are really dangerous, and people have adapted to it. And now what happens? Now what do they do? And uh, I think this movie had the challenge of showing that initial sequence, but there was also things like the military figured it out really quickly and they notified everybody, right? Yeah. That was part of it. Like yeah. they had the jets flying low and and saying over the speakers, do not do not speak, like the aliens are attracted to sound and they can't travel over water. Like we we saw how people in general figured it out really quickly and then warned each other. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think like I don't I'm not saying it makes sense necessarily, but I think that is what the one thing the movie asks you to accept. Yeah. And you're either on board with it or you're not. Yeah. And I, I think it goes back to it being a quiet place day one. And so no, I didn't see any of the marketing material, any of the trailers and like that. So going in there, knowing it being day one and having set expectations on my side. And it, it, again, it's, you know, it, it's an indi- individual thing on my side of having set expectations, but then the movie being about something completely different. And then sort of, it not really meeting my expectations and it kind of jarring me in my experience of sort of watching the movie. The expectation, expectation certainly is that you see the how, right? Like yeah. Almost every prequel would say, okay, this is how the alien invasion happened. And this is how they, like, let's show some scientists in our room as they figure this out. And they like, mm-hmm. maybe they kill one of the aliens and there's an autopsy scene and look at this big organ that looks like an ear and all of those, like none of that happens, mm-hmm. right? And that is obviously deliberate, but it's also a bold choice, right? It's, it's certainly not what audiences expect from a sci-fi horror prequel. Yeah. Like, pre- normally prequels are there to fill in all the blanks. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, I think what's really remarkable about this movie is that it kind of understood why frequ- uh, prequels are typically bad and po- poorly made stories. Mm-hmm. And then just said, what if we don't do those things? What mm-hmm. if we kind of just do it properly this time, right? And mm-hmm. think about how, what story we have to tell in this, in this setting and how we want this to unfold, as opposed to going through all the tropes. Like we don't see the original family, we don't see an explanation for why the uh, where the aliens come from anything you would expect from a prequel is just not here yeah so like my like the follow up question to that then would be how much again with it with this being the third film in the franchise how much does it then add to kind of like the lore and like the world building and stuff like that to kind of continue the story or approximately you know? nothing yeah right it's it like there, there's, there was this one scene where they i don't know it looks like they were eating eggs yeah. Kind of, I, I wasn't entirely clear what it was, but there's, there's a scene where Eric is trapped on this metal beam, right? Mm-hmm. I think he followed the cat or something. Yeah, the egg And then he it. sees the aliens, like they are, they are gathered around something that looks like eggs, and they are breaking them open and eating them. And it's not entirely clear what that is. And because he doesn't get any explanation, or we just see it. And maybe that is something that's setting up for, for something in part three or whatever. But yeah. I think that is the only thing. I think everything else is directly from oh uh, is them not being able to go on water. It's from part two, right? Because I've seen the the part one and I've seen this one. I've not seen part two. I've not seen part two either. I don't remember fully what happened. I do remember um they figured out how to kill the aliens, which wasn't with water. It was actually with some sort of device which cr- creates yeah. some sort of piercing sound. But I don't remember if um. What and which is not in this movie either. Like nobody figures this out. Wait, so, there was a scene where they were locked in some sort of basement and it was flooded. And I don't and I and I don't think one of the aliens. I think the aliens like using the walls to to walk across. I'm not too. I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but yeah. I think yeah. So the I alien tries to go out. after them underwater and it dies. Hmm. And it and the implication being that water is toxic to them. Hmm. And. This is also figured out very quickly, and in the end, we have people uh, surviving on boats and stuff like that. 
And I am not having seen part two. I don't know if this is a new edition or if this comes from that movie. It seems sounds a bit like it comes from part two. So they add nothing to the mythology, right? No, and, I, I just think this. I think this film was just to address how society came to be. Obviously, in part one and in part two, so I don't think it had nothing. It was just I don't literally think so. just. I don't think that happens. I think we just see people surviving, right? We 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 kind of have to justify that not everybody dies, mm-hmm. but after that, it's all about Samira. Right. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, but so wait, but hold on, hold on, hold on. It, that's pr- but that's pretty much self-explanatory though, in terms of like in terms of day one being a, yeah. being obviously an explanation of how it came to be because I, I get it was revolving around Samira, but when you're seeing all of those aliens and obviously seeing what they're doing to or what they're based in Chicago, I'm pretty sure that's is universal. It's gonna end up spreading. Yeah, no, no, but but like we don't we don't spend a lot of screen time on how people figure things out, right? We are just given glimpses that, okay, people figure out the thing about the sound and they figure out that they're safe on water. And that's it, right? Like, we, we don't see, like, it's not a big part of the story. The actual story is just about Samira's journey. And then in the background, we see a couple of more important milestones, like the original uh, the original chaos and then people figuring out to be quiet and then people figuring out that they're safe on water. Hmm. And that all happens in the background, but no screen time is spent on it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay, cool, okay, cool. And I think almost everybody expected this, right? Like we were expecting some kind of, like like in most prequels, somebody would have figured out the resonance thing, right? That if you create the right sound, it stuns the aliens and then they're yeah. easy to kill. And then you would have had to come up with a contrived solu- uh, answer to why this isn't common knowledge in the first movie, even though it happens over a year later and stuff like that. But this movie just didn't do that. It just said, okay, we're going to keep st- stick to the basic rules and then we're going to follow a very specific story just on a personal level and i think that's that's why this movie works so so well because it doesn't get bogged down with any of the other stuff speaking on personal level how do you feel about the duo between eric and sam so the one thing i didn't buy was that eric would je- jeopardize his life to help her like i, I, I don't did, i, 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 I didn't did, did really see the point in which he said okay so you have to be trapped in a foreign country you have nobody you're trapped in this disaster. Why are you risking your own life and probably throwing your own life away, right? By by not going with the the with most of the displaced people, and not by trying to get to the boats, you are probably going to die. For it's somebody fair. you've just met. Well, it's fair because he was by himself at the time. But he could have just followed the crowd. But mm-hmm. the crowd were gone. Not when he first appeared. Not when he first appeared because there was a bit of chaos going on uh, when he first appeared. And I think. He, the cat kind of leads him to the alleyway that she's yeah. in just before like I, th- the scene that happened before was extremely stupid as well where you had like again everyone knows that you have to be quiet but then you've got yeah, that. yeah that's the scene that i felt was okay. a bit stupid but yeah um, but i'm su- i'm sure they were gone because because he knew most where of them go, were like he knew like go in that direction yeah, he, and that's where the boats are yeah he knew that but he was by himself at the time so why yeah. that scene made sense for me is because obviously fear's going to make you do a lot of things so that's like i understood why he was still there because it was like okay i could either go by myself and find a crowd because I, I think they were gone i didn't see any of them around them like i because i'm sure if we watch the movie again i didn't see no one around him mm. maybe there were some people running in the background but I didn't see anyone around him because he was even yeah. looking b- back there. The way, like, when she said go over there, he looked back. And when he looked back at her, you could see the fear in his face. So it was like, yeah. is that either, he's, either his reaction was because, obviously, monsters are chasing them, or either it's because they're all gone. And obviously, he's going to have to go by himself and find a crowd. So that's why I thought that kind of makes sense why he followed her, because it was like, okay... I don't want to die, and this is a person that's, you know, this is the only but, person... But then why follow the one person who's going to get you killed? Like, he, why, why, why not go with everybody else? Like, I understand being scared, I understand trying to find somebody to latch on to, but mm-hmm. why her specifically, right? The minute he figures out that she's not going where everybody else is going, she would have said, he would have said, okay, I need to get to safety, good luck, right? Yeah, but if you put yourself in a situation, right, where you're by yourself and you're in a situation where... If you go one way, yeah, cool. You're gonna follow a group of people, but they're not there in eyesight view. You know what I'm saying in you're, they're not there. You can't yeah. see them. So you're gonna have to go by yourself, where it's infested with aliens. You know where one's gonna pop out, or you're gonna go somewhere where you're like there's someone right next to you right now, right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think 
most people would choose to stay with someone rather than no no that, that all makes sense life. but the one person who's not going to safety like that's kind of my thing like hmm. I've, I've been in not exactly obviously not alien invasions right but like unusual situations in foreign countries where i didn't know anybody and one thing you do is you go with the crowd right you you don't you don't go off in some random direction on some quest Right. So I, I just I, what, one thing I just didn't buy is that why he wanted to do to risk his life for somebody who he has never met when, in fact, there was a very clear direction in which you had to go for safety, or at least for your one shot at safety. So and I think the movie had a hard time justifying this because they, it's not like I can talk it out. Right. Like they, they have very limited ability to communicate. And so they have to resolve it in, in a very short scene. And. I don't think they quite got that. I think that was the one thing where you just had to go along with it. And after that, as they get, as they spend more time with each other and, and, and get to know each other better, then I buy that he starts to care for her and he wants to create this one perfect memory for her. Like at that point, right? Or go, go out to a pharmacy, try to get the painkillers for her, something like that. Yeah. Like everything that came after that, I bought because at that point they had gone through this journey and they had saved each other and they had shown that they you know that together they they have a better chance or whatever but that initial decision to go with her as opposed to everybody else is i didn't i didn't buy that, that's all i'm saying um, um i understand i just think he just didn't want to be alone because even when you know they had a uh, conversation in their flat where he says he's you know he's he came for a law degree all his family is back home so yeah. he's pretty much in america by himself that kind of made sense to me as to why he followed her later even though that scene happened later it kind of still made sense to me. Okay, it made more sense to me now when he chose to follow her because I thought everyone was gone. So it's like, okay, he just doesn't want to be alone anymore. So he's just going to stay who's closest to him. But I get where you guys are coming from. Um, okay, so, so what would you say? Sorry, can I, can I just add that? That was a funny scene as well where he's just like following her behind and she's trying to like shoo him away. That was... Uh, that was well, okay, so speaking of their, um, that relationship duo... The cat. Did the cat have any significance in this film that we missed, or was that, it just there as a comforter? That's what I would like to know because the idea of a cat not making any sound whatsoever or purring or whatever like that kind of broke the immersion for me a little bit, especially when the cat was submerged underwater for for a bit as well. It's like I've been around cats. Cats hate water, and cats. But do they have symbolisms around them though? Cats in general. This, but this this is what I'm asking because I I didn't pick up on any. I didn't, I didn't know. There is some symbolism of cats predicting death. Um, like, like there have been, like, stories about how cats living in, like, retirement homes and they always go to the person who's, who's next to die. The idea being that they can sense, they, they can sense that that person, you know, it. won't be around for very much longer. I don't know if that's, if that's what this was. I don't know. I think the initial inclusion of the emotional support cat was just kind of a sense of how she was still human but couldn't deal with other people. That that was my takeaway from it, mm. right? That that is why she had the cat and like she had clearly gone through a very like before before the movie starts, right? This this whole thing about being in the hospice and being like fifty years younger than everybody else and having nothing in common with anybody and just being there to die. Like I, like I understand getting that cat and that being your one life, like one emotional connection to anybody in your life, right? She doesn't seem to have any family left. If, if they are, they're never mentioned. So I, I think it has something to do about how broken her emotional life is because she has been preparing to die for such a long time. But I'm not sure what what the cat, what like what benefit the cat had in the rest of the movie. Like it seemed to be a little bit of a gimmick. Like we're constantly following that cat around and it, it never creates a problem like like you said it never makes a sound even when it should like like cats are like probably smart enough to figure out when there's danger mm -hmm. and they probably see that the humans have are behaving strangely and there's probably a reason for it and stuff like that right but it, it, it was a little bit fine in a lot of places yeah so the what would you guys highlight moments i was gonna say i actually like again one of the like just good emotional scenes was when they're in the apartment and it's raining outside and obviously they realize that because of sort of the rain side they can actually like speak and like talk and whatever and it's obviously like thundering as well and then just the release of emotion when they're screaming i just felt was like just like a just like a, a good scene because you know you can feel like they've been 
through so much, kind of so much trauma up in, up until that point, and you know they're having to withhold so much because they can't make a sound, they can't do, you know they can't express anything at all, otherwise they're going to die. So in that one particular moment, they're they're able to just fully let go and fully release. Like that was just one of, one of the highlights for me. Which was also a callback to the first movie, right, where the father takes the son to the waterfall. And the son is absolutely traumatized, right? Because every day of the last year and a half mm -hmm. has been to just avoid making sound. And he's absolutely, like, he's completely shell-shocked when his father tells him to scream or, like, yeah. make a sound or even just talk. Mm. And so I thought that was interesting that the same scene basically happens in both movies, but it has a different context, right? In the original movie, it was the father teaching his son a survivor skill. Right yeah. and bonding with him and trying to get a semblance of emotional normalcy, and here it is about people who have lived through a crisis, right, in a way that the people in the original movie didn't. Right, they're not really in a crisis; they're in a constant, like, under a constant threat, but it's not a crisis, right? Whereas yeah. in this movie, it is very much an emergency, and they've had to adapt very quickly, and they've been just in constant alert mode for a day, basically, and now suddenly they can vent. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, th I thought there was a neat parallelism without just being a retread because it's the same basic actions being in a completely different context. I actually forgot that about the first movie, you know. I actually watched it, watched it yesterday. So uh, that, that's why it's fresh in my mind. But yeah, there, there are several scenes that are just very similar and yeah. that just come from the same basic rules, right, of, of the sound based stuff. Uh, and I, I know we've we kind of moved away from things that kind of maybe like I just a little bit in the movie. That was one of the things about like the waterfall and you know, why I know that they sort of can't survive in water and this and any other, but the water fountain is still making a sound. Like there's still sound being made. So it's. it's the way where the idea is that it drowns out the sound, the, like, the, the speech. Right? Yeah, that's it, it's it's still a sound because it, they, they react to all sounds they react to all to no uh, they so in the first movie it's made very clear that they react to the to, to the loudest sound right they don't go after every sound they go after the loudest sound they hear yeah and as long as you're what you're saying is drawn out by a loud by a louder noise like thunder or like like a water fountain it's fine you can mm -hmm. you, you, you can talk you just have to it's this constant game of trying how loud can you go Right, mm -hmm. um, which was more of a deal in the first movie than here, but it 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 appeared here again, and that showed up during the th uh, thunderstorm scene, and that showed up with the children in the hiding under the water fountain and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think it does make sense, right? Because they're not not going after like like I said, not after not going after every sound. Yeah. So in in, in a context in a context, yeah, but yeah, but then then there's other scenes that contradict it in terms of like the shirt ripping scene or just like any like little like crack and the, and the monsters react to it it's just yeah 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 I, I don't think it's perfect about just how much sound attracts the aliens no but like what like it continues this this suspense of you never know which sound is going to do it mm -hmm. right and then like there, there's a scene when they are uh walking down the road right and there's somebody in a wheelchair and the the um wheel of the wheelchair is like just a little bit of a squeaking noise yeah and there's some other thing that makes just a little bit of noise and this is there's this tension of is this enough like, mm -hmm. is this what will set off the aliens yeah uh, but yeah i think i think you're right like if you really scrutinized it you like there would be some there would be some inconsistency about just how much sound causes an attack mm -hmm. how did you guys feel about the ending um her actually she pretty much um took off the what she took off her headphones and, so yeah, yeah pretty much her she pulled out the aliens. headphones so that the speakers would start playing yeah yeah how do you feel how that came to conclusion do you do you think that was a good ending did, did you, she should have continued on living or so one thing i didn't really get why she had to sacrifice herself for him yeah. right because like i understand that she has nothing to live for and she doesn't want to like she has achieved her closure now and therefore she can she can die but they frame it as a little bit as one of us has to sacrifice ourselves so that the other can live and so it makes sense that the terminally ill person sacrifices themselves right that didn't quite like they should have just gone separate ways right where he says okay there's there's a boat there we can we can make it and she says no i'm done you mm -hmm. go right that would have been enough like it's it, like it, it like the, I thought they framed it a little bit as 
they both were going, but then she stayed behind to cause a distraction. Then that didn't quite work, I, I, I didn't think. It, and it, I kept it, waiting for it to kind of, for the scene to start making sense, and it didn't quite. Like, it, like they didn't sell it as, this has to happen now so that he can live. Yeah. Because even even the whole, when she's like smashing the cars and this, that and the other, I, I felt like they gave her a little bit of plot armor during during that particular scene, especially when they've shown how the sort of, no, aliens have reacted to sort of no, uh, the loud, loud sounds uh, in previous sort of no, uh, previous yeah, yeah. attacks. And then again, what also didn't make sense was that, you know, after after sort of no, the aliens have stopped chasing her and they start chasing Kim towards the end, it's why didn't she make one more sound to attract the aliens kind of back to her? Yeah. And you know, he then goes to the boat. It, it, it's just, I feel like they needed to create the tension so we can maybe give them a little bit of blight in that, but it's just another thing that just didn't make sense to me. And instead they give us like this kind of, I think that's the one cliche action scene where he runs on the pier and yeah. the aliens almost catch up to him, but then like they try to grab him and yeah. like by, by an inch he gets away and falls into the water into safety. That mm. was the one cliche scene. Yeah, like I would have had, would have I think it would have been stronger if that he he was doomed until she I don't know yelled or like made some kind of sound to attract them back to her something like that right it it okay. felt it felt like we we kind of have to do this like we we did the scene in the in the jazz bar that we wanted to do but now we still have a movie to finish mm-hmm. that's kind of how that how that one scene came across I think it should have just ended there where she's got she, she's got he, she's achieved her closure. He's helped her get it, and but he still has a life to live, and so he walks out and goes towards the boats. That should have been the it end. Could, like, he could, didn't actually need to get to the boats. It could have also been a case where you said where they're going kind of separate ways, where she's maybe got her headphones in or she's got, like, something in, and then as he's going to the boat, he's made a sound, and then the aliens start rushing him, so then yeah. she then... Like then at that point pulls out the sort of no, the headphones and then plays the music out loud and is happy like she's like fulfilled fulfilled what she wanted to achieve yeah. she's kind of listening to music she wants to and then she's going out on her terms essentially or uh, yeah. or whatever I feel like that could have worked as well yeah yeah and then otherwise really strong movie that doesn't do any of the cliches and doesn't have these kinds of loose threads I thought that scene kind of stood out but I think the actual ending which is the scene in the jazz bar I think that that is the real ending of the movie. And I think that one is borderline perfect, mm. right? Because she gets just everything she needs and she, her life doesn't need to go on at this point. Yeah. For me, it was actually when, what's his name, Ruben died. I think when he died, that kind of like set the tone of the harsh reality that they're living in. So unexpected. Well, it wasn't actually unexpected. It was, it, was, it was something that was coming, but it was hard to take. It was very emotional. I was like, damn, like, that's like no one person. Sorry? Are you talking about your favourite scene? Or... Yeah, yeah, my highlight scene. That was my highlight moment because that like set the tone for me. That's when I actually like had my intention gripped. I was like, oh damn, this is Quiet Place. Cause I think Quiet Place was also known as well for like deaths as well, the iconic deaths. So in terms of the front, both the films. So yeah, with that scene, I was like, damn, yeah, yeah, now nah, nah, this, this, we're, we're in the Quiet Place setting, we're in the Quiet Place world, we're in the Quiet Place universe. Um, but also, what speaking of this, this has actually broken uh franchise's record when it comes to the opening weekend um so this is actually this is like this film is doing really really well um what does this say for like cinema because obviously in terms of i'm not trying to kind of go adrift from the topic at hand but a lot of films have been doing well especially when it comes to i think the horror genre as well has been doing very well last year and this year would we say quiet place one day one could be a resurgence when it comes to box office sales, when it comes to cinema in general, the interest people have for cinema. Are we starting to see it now? I mean, no, normally horror movies do well in the box office because their bar is so low, right? Like with, with an $8 million, $10 million budget, it's, it's hard to fail, kind of. Like that's, that's why it's such a reliable genre. Sure. This, but this is different. Like this is going on $100 million as we're recording this. I think this is just a really well-managed franchise. Like I said, I haven't seen part two yet, but it seems like this movie is not obligatory. This is not a setup movie. This is not anything else that we would associate with franchises. It's just a story in this world. And it takes the rules that, is, that have been set up by the franchise and then applies them to a new circumstance. And I think it really shows that this franchise has legs because 
and I don't, I'm not I'm not a quiet place fan like before Sunday I'd never seen one of these but I think it shows that you can just put all sorts of people into the situation and then see what they do and you can have all these different like this is completely different thematically from the original right the original is all about family and about sacrifice for the people you you, you care about and building for a future that may never come and all of these things and this movie is not like that. This is a complete, thematically completely different, which I think is really interesting about it, but people showed up for it, mm. right? This isn't just Quiet Place fans, right? People are just being attracted by to this for some reason. And it's easy to say, well, if you just make a good movie, people go, will go see it, but plenty of good movies fail. Mm. And like people generally have not been going to non-franchise movies, and this is not a crowd pleaser. This is not a huge franchise. So this is like this is a pretty young franchise, right? This is not like a long-standing thing that people are nostalgic for. This is basically a new story that is well liked among people who have seen it, but it's not like one of one of the big IPs that people normally go to the cinema for, right? I don't think, and, and it's also a horror prequel which don't have a good track record. It's not. You know, it's not a slasher. That's not a big, big body count. It's very introspective. It's very uh, character focused and emotion, emotional. Like on paper, this should not work, but somehow it has, just because it's gotten good word of mouth. So I'm, I'm honestly surprised, but I'm happy for it. Uh, I think one thing that I hope that you know, cinema takes from some of this franchise as specifically is, is what you mentioned about how you just have characters and you put them in this situation. You have like different characters, you put them in this situation and then you just see what they do. Uh, again, like you mentioned, like the themes between sort of this one, uh, this movie and sort of the first one, two completely sort of different things set in, set in the same universe. Uh, and I feel like more franchises need to be braver in that, in terms of sort of, you know, not being not having the same feeling across you know, all these different movies and sort of trying to sort of go with the same themes or the same sort of gimmicks or the same sort of no the same stereotypes or typecasts or whatever. I, I feel like a lot of franchises just need to be braver and sort of no tell I mean we, we, we just had the discussion about sort of Star Wars, but you know, that's an example of a place where you can just have more unique stories set in the same universe and as long as you do it well enough, this is an example of it, but as long as you do it well enough, people will you know, have positive reactions to it. And again, even if it doesn't do well out the gate, the positive word of mouth will carry the movie. So what next then? Because then I do, um, then you said earlier as well, not when, when we were back in, at work, you did say there's going to be one more after this in terms of part three. Yeah, um, from, from what I understand, there's a core trilogy planned, which is part one, two and three. Mm. And this is essentially a side story, mm. like not connect, not directly connected to mm. the main story, which which I think is about that family from mm. the first movie and where they're going. Mm. And this is basically almost like an anthology thing where it for one movie, it follows somebody else's story in that same world. Mm. That's my understanding. Yeah. Mm. but like where after that what did they do because they've got such a successful franchise right but people always like they're scared that like production companies don't know when to end a story because they you, like you know because they'll milk it out and try and get as much money as we as they possibly can and that can kind of like ruin the franchise itself and obviously the kind of moments that it produced from you know the previous movies so with this film what do they do next after the part three like should yeah. they continue like uh, yeah, should they be like a continuation as in they create more movies or should they kind of break it down into like series or should they just come to an end in general so this is really an opportunity to do it right right so it sounds a bit like the core story is actually moving forward right like the status quo at the end of the first movie is very different than at the beginning it's not just about survival because at the end of the first movie they discover a weapon right which is the resin that like acoustic resonance kind of thing and i think in the second movie the daughter is the main character as well so it sounds to me like they are they have a story in mind that is going somewhere and i really hope that they keep moving forward and it's not just people have to be quiet for two hours like if they do that then it gets very stale very quickly and i think in this case it's saved by the performance of of the two main actors but i, th I think the way to ruin this franchise is to just keep doing that same thing over and over again. And 
I, I hope they can go forward in the story and then keep changing the status quo to reflect how people adapt to this to this alien invasion and eventually start fighting back. Because this is very much a very humanist and very optimistic apocalypse. Probably the most optimistic and pro-humanity apocalypse I've ever seen. Because there are no bad people in this. Right? Across the sure, two sure, movies yeah. that I've seen, there are no bad people. Nobody's taking advantage of anybody. Nobody, there's no looting, there's no raiding. It's just people hunkering down, trying to live, trying to care for each other and trying to help each yeah. other. In the first movie, that was the family. And even when they encountered other people, there was never any aggression, right? Because everybody's just trying to survive. And here it's very similar. We don't see any looting. Nobody's trying to take advantage of anybody. Nobody's, you know, doing anything negative, right? Everybody's just human, right? And that is very refreshing and very surprising. I was actually expecting somebody like in, in this movie to somebody to start looting a shop and that sets or like that breaks wind and they break windows to do that and then the aliens eat them or something. And not even that happened. You had right? sorry, well, there was the one moment of conflict which actually was another like highlight scene in this where you had uh the father where he's he's there with his son and then you have the guy that's threatening because he he feels hopeless. I think the helicopter's just been taken down. He feels hopeless and he wants to kind of like shout and speak and he's having to like restrain the guy and like stop him from speaking and he's looking at like back and forth between him and, son, between him and his son and I think they the play that he accidentally kills him by like smashing his head against the against the rock True. I, feel, yeah. I feel like that was like the one kind of moment of a grey like a grey moment in, in something of the movie between something of like something of pe- people's humanity and something of what you would have to do to sort of you know, uh, survive and sort of you know, protect your loved ones yeah. But even that came from a good place, right? That was yeah. out of desperation because this one guy was about to ruin it for everybody else. And he wasn't trying to kill him, right? He was mm-hmm. trying to get him to be quiet mm-hmm. and then accidentally smashed his head against the wall, right? Yeah. And he was shocked when it happened. Yeah. But yeah. Like, like take any other apocalypt- apocalyptic story mm-hmm. and people immediately turn into monsters without exception. Yeah. And this is the exact opposite. And I think that's really notable. And I think that's why it feels fresh and different. I think that was actually a smart implementation as well, because it has you thinking as well, is that is that what is that what's to come? As in like is you know, humanity gonna start to break down, is it gonna be a thing where it's gonna be one for themselves? Which is refreshing, like you said, that it did actually come to it. And I think that's actually more realistic of what society would actually be like in that situation. There might be accidents, even though the accident yeah. was a big accident, but if there were, if we were ever in that situation, we would most likely work together because there's strength in numbers. So yeah, it was actually very refreshing. To hear. I think the realistic version is that both happens, mm-hmm. but I think the apocalyptic genre way overstates how selfish and awful people are. Because yeah. look, go look at any crisis, man, natural disaster, war zone, anything. There, there's there's looting happening, there's exploitation happening, everything. Like name it, and it happens. Yeah. But there's also people helping each other, neighbors and strangers, helping each other out, sharing food, sharing medicine, mm-hmm. protecting each other, right? It is like it is a mix of both. And the balance in the post apocalyptic genre is way too much towards the cynicism, I think. Yeah. And I, I feel like uh, Lupita's character kind of encap- encapsulates both quite well, where she's initially reluctant to have him follow her along and she's trying to shoo him away for like, her own selfish reasons obviously she doesn't and again you can kind of see that she can see that she she wants to kind of go against the crowd she can see sort of some of the dangers of sort of being amongst the herd and this and any other and having sort of people follow you around and like you know uh them potentially, potentially making the sound that sort of might harm you but then you then after that see the humanity in her where she, after he's kind of like been with her for sort of a period of time they start to break common ground this any other and they start to like kind of like build a bond and stuff like that is when she's like wanting to help and sort of you know uh is, is a lot is a lot more human towards towards him yeah well guys last thoughts and ratings unless anyone else had any other questions oh, um, that's that's why thoughts. i know that daniel always has something yeah, yeah. The, the only the only thing this may be a bit late in the video to mention but uh, I thought it didn't look that great. Uh, that that was a kind of the one negative thing I have to say about it. Uh, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Everything looked like the big CGI set pieces looked a little bit blurry, a little bit muddy. The jets flying overhead and the like the meteors dropping and all of that, that looked really good. 
Um, but when you saw like into the distance and there was like burning skyscrapers or whatever, it really stood out for how how bad that looked for me. Um, yeah. And that the end, but that was contrasted with just the over, like the sheer quality for everything else. Like mm -hmm. everything else looked great. The monsters, I thought, looked fine. Not better than in the first movie for some reason. So I think they really were stretched in the budget here. But I think ultimately character and performance and story win the day. And I think on that front, this movie is so, so compelling that like I noticed it, but I didn't care really. I don't think I picked up on it, but I I I don't normally look too too deep into it. Last thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> I think I came into this on the fence, and again, that's having watched it only about like two days ago, and again going in with set expectations and come and you know, uh being delivered a completely different movie. The movie that we are given is a great movie, uh, and following this discussion, I kind of like lean a lot more positive towards the movie than you know, uh, maybe coming into this. And maybe maybe you are like Daniel, it, it, it you know it probably did well to not go the stereotypical route uh, of some of the sort of you know, uh, people would do in terms of like over explaining things. Uh, and funny enough, even when we were discussing when we were sort of having a discussion about where it can go afterwards, all I could picture was this like big final battle where you have sort of, you know, everyone like kind of like shooting down all the sort of different aliens. And it actually seemed underwhelming to me. It, it seemed like that would be sort of the underwhelming sort of the choice for them to 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 go with actually. So, you know, no, knowing that that's kind of like bumped up this film. Um, for me, again, the performances were fantastic. Like Lup Lupita Nyong'o, you know, absolutely carried this movie uh, on her back. Uh, the chemistry between the two actors were fantastic. <laughs> Funny I say fantastic. Uh, the male like actor is going to be Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four as well. And this is kind of like the first thing that I'm kind of like seeing him in or sort of paying, you know, really paying attention to of his. Uh, so that gives me sort of like high hopes for sort of like him, him in that movie as well. And yeah, overall, a great story. A great sort of warm, emotional story. Does a lot of things right. Does, does a lot of questionable things, but does a lot of things right. Um, and yeah, I'd give it... A solid seven, seven and a half out of ten. So this movie proves pretty much all of my arguments about that I've made, or pretty much all of my hot takes on the post-apocalyptic genre and about prequels and about pretty much everything else. And for that reason, I give it a five out of six. Like, this is just excellent. Uh, and it's one of the few movies this year that I would want to rewatch because it doesn't have any big deal breakers in it. A lot of movies this year have been, have had some good moments but then they are embedded in kind of weird choices or something else that, that breaks down the movie for me. And this time I was just riveted all the way through. I have no big, no, no major complaints. Maybe some of the logic doesn't quite hold up if you really scrutinize it. But just as a character focused story, it doesn't really expand the universe, but it kind of shows us a different, different slice of it. It just, it just works. And it's just it's just riveting on a human level, on a story level. It, it's it's just great. Well, for me, I'm giving this film a solid, strong seven out of ten. Um, very good story. It's definitely a film that will leave that will have you on the edge of your seat most of the times. I'd say half of the time. Um, yeah, man, this was a really good watch. It was entertaining. I wouldn't really say it was memorable for me. But I will say that it was definitely worth the watch. And for its time, as in like during my time watching it, it was so worth it. Um, you'll definitely, you'll be entertained. Um, it, you know, like I said, and um, Daniel even touched upon it as well. Like just having a good story is what that matters overall when it comes to film. You don't have to concentrate on the aesthetics of it and the production budget, et cetera, et cetera. Even Godzilla minus one, like the look of it. Um, I remember you guys didn't really like it as well, even though I did kind of like the look of the monster. But in terms of like, you know, the, you could tell that it was it, you know, you could tell that it had a very limited amount of budget, but it, the story. I, I, thought, I thought it looked good, but you could see the budget. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, I think, you know, it, it, this just proves once you have a good story, trust me, like that's the main thing that matters. Have a good story and likable characters. But yeah, for me, a solid seven out of ten, a very, very good watch, an intense anxiety thriller film, which, yeah. Yeah, it will definitely leave you on the edge of your seat. But guys, yeah. Sorry, I was just just one thing. I actually can't wait to to watch it again, mainly because I've I've had this experience before where I've gone into movies with one expectation and then been given a different movie and disliked it on the first watch and then having rewatched it with sort of you no know, the correct expectations actually enjoyed it a lot. So 
this is one I'm actually looking forward to rewatching uh, and then even seeing if it even bumps it up from a 7.5 to even higher because I'm I'm, I'm mm. sure it can possibly do that. So. Mm. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention as well the performance. The performance was amazing, especially Lupita. And just the way that she stuck to character when it comes to her motivation of wanting to go and find pizza, she literally stuck to that goal. Amazing execution. Um, yeah, guys. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed today's discussion. Have they? Yep. Yeah. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Of course, uh, keep rocking with us and keep helping us grow. Thank you, guys. We will catch you next week. Au revoir. Ciao. Bye-bye.